Welcome to the APA3 workshop, where we will be showing you the products that we offer. We currently offer three services, Chain API, which is the ability to bring any off-chain API on-chain using our AirNode system. QRNG allows you to receive true random numbers on-chain with no token required. And our newest product, DAPIs, price feeds on-chain that is constantly live updated. No token required as well. Let's get into it. Our DAPI SDK only requires one library import and only requires two functions to get started right away. You can see that we have our iProxy.Soul library import, and then with that we have our two functions here, a set proxy address that lets us choose which price feed we want to use, and a read data function to read the price feed. All we do is set our proxy address, which we'll grab in just a minute, and the ability to read. You can see that it returns two items, the price or the value of the asset that we're looking for, and the timestamp of the last time the price was updated on chain. We can head over to api3.org and check the data feeds and look at the marketplace. Here we're going to go ahead and look for ETH USD. And we are across multiple chains. For this example, we're going to use Sepolia Testnet. You see that the on chain value is currently live. On testnets, we only have self funded. On mainnet, we also have managed feeds. For now, we're just going to go ahead and grab the proxy address. Right here so that way we can set our price feed and so we're going to go ahead and deploy this contract we're going to go down and set our proxy feed we're going to go ahead and set our proxy address we're sending it to the ETH USD on Sepolia And once we have confirmed it, we can go ahead and read our data feed function and it will return us a price feed and a timestamp. And you'll see that we have $1,615.01 with trailing decimals and the timestamp available of when this was last updated. To verify that, we can go onto the market feed, $1,615 with one cent and trailing zeros and the last timestamp that it was updated fairly easy to use so then you can get started with your price feed for whatever you need a perpetual borrow lending or whatever you need that price feed and timestamp for our QRNG random number generator only requires one import it is the RRP requester v0 and the request contract setup only requires three functions one to set the original parameters depending on the chain that we choose to deploy on and the type of requests we want one, to make the request for the random number, and then three, what we do when we receive our random number. Here we have events to allow the contract to emit the requests and response. We have a few public variables to help set up our request parameters depending on our chains. We have a public array so we can see the numbers we get in return, and we have a mapping to keep track of our requests and a response. Our constructor requires our air node depending on the chain that we deploy on. Let's look at the function. In the set request parameters, we have to request the air node, the endpoint array, and the sponsor wallet. The air node, the endpoint array are all set up in the docs. Sponsor wallet is generated depending on our deployed contract. We'll touch on that in a second. Here, our make request array, a lot of this is boilerplate code. You don't have to modify this much at all. It is making the request for our numbers and is asking for the, the amount, how many numbers we want in return. Do we want one number, two numbers, three numbers, on and on and it will return that many different numbers. Here, once we get the request, it will have to respond back to our contract and it'll respond with our fulfillment. It'll return the numbers to us. Here, we have this public variable set, so it'll decode the data that we get back and give us the array of numbers that we have. So then we can display it on Remix. Once you have your numbers, then you can import your logic here, whether this is an NFT project or a game project or some kind of attack or level up, with those numbers, you can do whatever logic you want in here to import your contract data. Let's go ahead and deploy this. And we're going to go over to our docs to get our air node RP. So we're going to go over to api3.org and we're going to go into the resources and we're going to go to the docs. We're going to head over to QRNG and we're going to look at our chains. And use for mainnet for our intended purposes, we're going to go ahead and use testnet. So we're going to scroll past this and go to our testnets. Here we have testnet Sepolia. So we can go ahead and grab our AirNode RRP v0 address, which is this address here. 
We're going to go to Remix, and we're going to go ahead and paste this down and deploy it to Sepolia. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our parameters. Let's go ahead and minimize this to make this just a little bit cleaner. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to set our request parameters in which we need the air node, endpoint array, and our sponsor wallet. So if we go to set request parameters, we need to input all these settings. In our documents, we're going to go to providers. We're going to scroll down. Remember, ANU is for mainnet. So we want to scroll down to our testnet random numbers. We're going to go ahead and grab our air node, copy that in. We want our endpoint UN256 array. This is for a single number request. This is for an array of numbers. So we're going to grab our array. And now we need a sponsor wallet. In our docs, you can see that we can generate a sponsor wallet. I've already preset this for time to have our general. To generate our sponsor wallet, it is it requires an air node extended public address, our air node address, and the sponsor address. Let's go ahead and cover those one by one. The air node extended public address is the XPUB, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. Put that back in here and paste it. It's going to want our air node address, which is the air node. And it's going to want the sponsor address, which is our deployed smart contract address. So if we head back over to Remix, let me move this to the side. We're going to go ahead and look at our deployed contract because this is the address we want to sponsor. We're going to go ahead and paste that down. And we're going to copy the entire thing. We're going to open a command prompt or terminal. And we're going to paste it in. And it will generate a new sponsor wallet for us. Our sponsor wallet will be generated. We'll go ahead and grab this address. And then you can check on Sepolia's testnet that this address has been generated. And you see that we have a contract address ready to go. What we must do is fund this wallet because this is the wallet that will pay for the gas transaction for the request of random numbers. So we'll go ahead and fund it with a little bit of gas. And you see that we have updated our balance for our sponsor wallet with 0.1 ETH. We can go ahead and put this away for just a little bit. We'll go ahead and input our sponsor wallet address, which is the address we just generated, and then update our smart contract. Okay, now that our smart contract has been updated, what we're going to do is we're going to make a request. So again, none of this really has to be changed. We're just requesting the amount of what we want. So we're going to go ahead and make the request. I'm going to go ahead and make a request for three random numbers, and we're going to go ahead and send that transaction. Now, it's a two-transaction system. The first transaction is to make the request to the air node system that we have in place, and then we have to wait for a response. So we have now set the request, and so now we will wait for the air node to respond back to our smart contract and call this function. Once we get a response, you'll see that we have an array of numbers. It has been a few moments, so we're going to check our results. If we go to our array, we're going to go ahead and pick array position zero and get our number. And you'll see that we get a very, very large decimal number. We can modular that on the decoding. So we can put a modular 100. So if you want to do something like a uh, out of 100, you can definitely modular that. If we look at position one, we should get a totally different number. And we have an exactly, it's exactly what we've requested, a different number. And if we go to position three, we should have our third number. There we go. So you can see, once you get your number, you can add any logic you want, whether that's minting an NFT with these random numbers, or it's doing an attack with these random numbers, or sending out a payment with these random numbers, or a loot box. Um, the choice is yours. API 3 bounty prizes. We are looking for the best use of DAPI price feeds, utilizing crypto, commodities, equities, or Forex data by activating your feed through API 3's market. Project ideas could be paymasters using account abstraction, perpetual swaps, oracle protected swaps, or lending protocols. Best use of API 3 QRNG random numbers, 
add unpredictable dynamics to your application with random numbers using API 3's QRNG. Project ideas could be like randomized airdrops, loot box, NFT mints, or light strategy games. And finally, API 3 runners up. Either use QRNG or DAPI price feeds in your DAP to qualify as an API 3 runner up to have your share of the three way split. Thank you, and good luck in the hackathon.